welcome to the iPad episode of the online classroom. I equals P times A times T, where I is impact, P is population, A is affluence or the rate of consumption, and T is technology. This is a really simple and useful framework for thinking about the impact of a product in the market. If you put units against the IPAT variables, you could consider P as the number of people, A as the consumption per person, and T as the impact per unit consumption. In this case, we were looking at emissions, but you could just as easily look at water, for example. If we go back to emissions, you notice that the units cancel themselves out. If we're looking at two different types of vehicles to choose from, P becomes a bit redundant because the population in this instance is the same. So then we look at the affluence and the technology. Consumption tends to go up when technology improves. If we consider, say for example, the kilometres travelled, any increase in the kilometres travelled needs to be offset by a decrease in the emissions per kilometre. If we compare two different cars, an unleaded Nissan Micra and the plug-in Nissan Leaf, we leave our kilometres as the same trip length. We look at the tailpipe emissions as our measure for T. The Nissan Micra uses 5.4 litres per 100 kilometres, which can be converted to a carbon dioxide equivalent of 125 grams per kilometre. So, over 20 kilometres, that is an approximate impact of 4.9 kilograms of carbon dioxide equivalent. If we compare the Nissan Leaf using the same number of kilometres, because there are no CO2 emissions, it's approximately zero. But you could argue that this isn't a fair comparison because we haven't looked at how the electricity was generated. So if we consider the life cycle, so if we considered the carbon dioxide equivalents for the life cycle part, we need to add an extra 2.4 kilograms of carbon dioxide equivalent for the production of 1.8 litres of fuel. We can then look at the Nissan LEAF in two different scenarios. The first being the plug-in, where you might be using the grid. And in Canberra, that would be an approximate carbon dioxide equivalent of 1.5 kilograms for that 3.4 kilowatt hours of energy. If you were to use a zero emissions option, such as photovoltaics, then that would still be close to zero kilograms of carbon dioxide equivalent. But again, you could argue that that might not be a fair comparison and that perhaps you should look at the embodied energy that goes into providing those photovoltaics or the embodied energy that's required to set up the fuel network. So far we've ignored the P variable and if you're looking at your system in a broader context it's worthwhile thinking about how IPAT can give you a basic understanding of the behavior in the system. Here we have the number of cars per thousand people graphed for about the last 110 years and as you can see the population of cars in the US has increased dramatically if you combine that to the increased affluence, i.e. the number of kilometres driven, you need to see a sharp improvement on the effect of the technology. When conducting an IPAT analysis on your system, make sure to think about the correct level to set your boundaries. And when you are comparing two different products, make sure that you're comparing them at the same scale. That wraps up the IPAT online classroom.